his vein for a man to suppose himself chaste who allows his imagination to run riot amid scenes of amorous associations. The man whose lips delight in tales of licentiousness, whose eyes feast upon obscene pictures, who is ever ready to pervert the meaning of a harmless word or act into uncleanness, who finds delight in reading vivid portrayals of acts of lewdness. Such a one is not a virtuous man, though he may never have committed an overt act of unchastity, if he cannot pass a handsome female in the street without an imagination approaching the secrets of her person, he is but one grade above the open libertine, and is truly unchaste as the veriest debauchee. Man may not see these mental adulteries, he may not perceive these filthy imaginings, but one sees and notes them. They soil and mar the mind, and as the record of each day of life is photographed upon the books of heaven, they appear in bold relief in all their innate hideousness. O oh, purity, how rare a virtue! How rare to find a face which shows no trace of sensuality! One turns with sadness for the thought that humans, forms divine, have sunk so low. The standard of virtue is trailing in the dust. Men laugh at vice and sneer at purity. The body laugh, the ribald jest, the sensual glance, the obscene song, the filthy tale, salute the eyes and ears at every street corner, in the horse car, on the railroad train, in the bar room, the lecture hall, the workshop. In short, the works and signs of vice are omnipresent.